the big thing that people ask all the time is how am I going to make it after I leave this toxic relationship? It's scary. Um, do you ever feel like leaving is just too scary so you might as well stay? Um, you feel like there's nothing better out there? Maybe you think that they're going to change, that finally you've waited long enough and you've done all the right things and now they're finally going to change who they are. Um, you're wondering how you're going to survive on your own. Maybe you haven't been working for a while. Maybe you've been used to depending on them and you're not really sure what to do. So I'd like to make sure that I go through some of the uh, questions that people ask and, you know, make sure that you understand how you can get through some of these scary times that you might be having if you are still in this codependent toxic relationship. So really important to know when to let go. You know, the biggest thing that I think with codependency is that we hold on till our fingers are purple, you know, like till it, we've got blisters on our hands. We're holding on to that relationship because we're so afraid of failing. Some of the most strong independent people that I know are also, also codependents. You know, we don't want to fail. We want to make sure that we are holding on and giving everything and we give just one more try. You know, maybe this time they'll finally figure it out. So it's important for us to know when to let go. You know, is there emotional abuse? Is there physical abuse? Is there constant criticism? Is there lying? Is there cheating? Is there emotional starvation? There's, there's those things that for most people that are not codependent would be obvious. Those are the ones where we would say, hell no, why would I put up with anyone who's cheating or uh, being abusive or anything like that? But when we're codependents, we are so used to feeling that kind of discomfort that even when we see those things, those are not red flags to us. So I want to give you a heads up. Those are red flags. If they are doing too much too soon in a relationship, that is a red flag. If they are being abusive at any kind, if they are cursing at you, if they are threatening you, if they were, are causing you harm or fear, that is something that is a cause for concern and to get out of the relationship. You should not have a lack of security. You should not have a fear which keeps you in the relationship. Um, some of the other things you know to think about People know when it's bad and they stay. You know, ask yourself why that is. When you know that you're being in an abusive situation, when you know that people are treating badly, being treated badly, why are you staying in that relationship? What's keeping you there? Um, you want more for yourself, but you stay anyway. You know, ask yourself why. Why is it that I know that there's more out there for me? Or maybe you don't know. Maybe that's one of the issues that you have lost the ability or maybe you never had it. Maybe you never saw that there was bigger possibilities for you than what is already existing for you right now that you can create the life that you want. Um, there might be other important needs that you are not having in your life because of this relationship. Maybe you've lost friendships. Maybe other um, relationships have suffered. Maybe family relationships have suffered so, because you've stuck and held on to this relationship for so long. So what do you do when it feels just as bad and scary to stay as it does to leave? Well, obviously, leaving a difficult relationship is hard. Leaving any relationship is hard. Change of any kind can be hard. So there's some things that you want to make sure that you remember when you're going through this whole process is, you know, really make sure that you are being present with yourself. You know, a lot of times we think of what happened in the past. Oh, remember when they were so great. Remember when things were in the beginning. Remember the possibilities that that person had, that the relationship had. You need to be present. Don't think as much about what's happening tomorrow, what happened yesterday. Be present in the now and realize what's happening right now. Um, keep track. Keep a journal. You know, when they gaslight you, when you start to question your own sanity, when you wonder, is it really as bad as I think it is? Write that stuff down so that you can go back to it and remind yourself. So that's something that's really important. Um, be aware of what's happening in your body. You know, I was sick all the time. I was having major health issues when I was in toxic relationships. My back was hurting all the time. My shoulder was hurting all the time. I had all these different issues that were going on. And my body was trying to tell me, like, get the hell out, Stephanie. This is not a healthy place for you. And you will notice that if you stay in this toxicity, you will have a variety of health issues. That's why health is a triangle. It's physical, social, mental, and spiritual, all areas. And when I work with my clients, we work on all four of those different areas because those are all so important and one will affect the other. So if we are emotionally or physically 
um, having you know this unhealthy relationship it's affecting our body all around so making sure that we're listening to our body our body is telling us what we know we need to hear but we don't want to hear it we ignore it we kind of push it off um, ask yourself the question how are you avoiding the truth what excuses are you giving we know that it's not good so what are we avoiding what what is what is making us afraid what is the truth so write down those questions um, give yourself a deadline I remember you know I I remember turning 33 and I was like okay I'm getting older I might as well just stay in this relationship because yeah I thought 33 was old and of course now I'm nine years later uh, but I was 33 and I was thinking I was getting old and I was like I might as well just stick in this relationship and deal with it and see what happens and then I remember turning 34 and thinking oh my god I'm a year older and it's exactly the same as it was and time kept going by and I kept getting older and nothing was getting any better and I kept thinking is this gonna be the way I end my life is this gonna be the way it is forever for me and had I stayed in that toxic relationship had I not pushed through the discomfort because it is uncomfortable I don't want anyone to think that it's super easy if it was easy everyone would be living the life of their dreams but it's not super easy that's why getting support is so helpful but pushing through that discomfort feel the pain and do it anyway um, but you know you really need to set yourself a deadline and say hey if I'm still feeling this way by this date I will leave no matter what I will change no matter what I will get the right support no matter what you know give yourself that deadline um, and become selfish as codependents we take care of everyone else we forget to take care of ourselves in fact taking care of ourselves is actually what feels uncomfortable that's one of the biggest things that are hurdles that I have to you know jump over as a coach is to remind people you don't have to feel that with that way or this way whatever it is that you're feeling you don't have to feel that but to remind people that taking care of yourself is not a bad thing being selfish is not a bad thing for some people that's hard to hear because they're so used to taking care of everybody else they're used to putting everyone before or ahead of themselves so becoming selfish is part of that journey um, like I said before let go of the fantasy let go of what could be I mean I remember on paper I felt like my ex and I were perfect for each other and on paper we were you know we both were hard workers and we had these things we were hard workers in the beginning I could I should say because that changed after a while um, but I had this fantasy of like what it could be if he only changed XYZ if he only was a little bit different here and there if he stopped cursing at me if he stopped threatening me if he stopped ruining special occasions if he stopped you know acting in a way where I felt I needed to walk on eggshells all those things weren't him so I had to stop living in the fantasy of what could be I'm very good at seeing the possibilities in people which is great as a coach it's great as a teacher that is not great in a relationship in a relationship you should see who the person is accept who they are and allow them to be it's when people are looking for help and they come to me as a coach or it's a student that's a good place because that I can help that I get paid for that that's wonderful but when your personal relationships family friends your sexual relationships that should not be a place where you're going to look to help them that is not a place that's appropriate for that to happen fight for you you deserve to fight for yourself you deserve to be happy you deserve a life that's filled with joy and contentment I mean every single day looking for that joy looking for that peace the calmness you deserve all of that so fight for that fight for you and your happiness you fought for everybody else your whole life it's time to fight for yourself um, another thing to remember is replace that you can't leave with won't leave and I know that might sting a little bit because people say well I can't I don't have the ability to leave well change that to won't because you can if you come up with the right solution for those of you who have had not been working for those of you who don't have a lot of family support things like that it's more difficult I'm not gonna lie but it is possible if you set yourself up before you leave so there are ways to get out if you are ready and you are saying no matter what I will not put up with this anymore so change the can't to won't and see if that changes your your thought process at all um, remember that not making a decision is a decision 
So saying, oh, you know, I don't know right now. I'm not really comfortable right now. I don't know, I don't know. That's a decision to stay. That's a decision to keep things exactly the way they are. And is that okay with you? You know, for some people that's where they are. And I'm not ever gonna push anyone. You have to be ready 100% for yourself to say, I am committing to this change to really commit to it. And it, you know, that's where I come in and help. But for people that are not sure and they're still kind of back and forth, they'll self-sabotage. They'll say they're ready, they're not really ready, and then they'll sabotage their success. So they won't actually make a change and then they'll say, see, I wasn't able to leave. And they did it to themselves. Because you can leave if you put yourself in the, the right mindset to leave. If you say, I am willing to do whatever it takes to make the change. And part of whatever it takes really is to get the right help to make sure that you are getting out and you're prepared. So what do you need to do? You need to make an exit plan. Um, if you, you know, if you have a local domestic violence shelter near you, contact them, ask them what, they're, what they suggest as an exit plan. Some of the things that I can say is save money, even if it's just a few dollars here and there. Um, make copies of important paperwork, have some clothing, figure out a place to stay, um, change your phone number, block them, go no contact. Remember that leaving can be some of the most dangerous times when someone's in an abusive relationship. So we don't take that lightly at all. Be very well prepared for them not to be happy and try to fight. Sometimes they fight by doing really negative, nasty things. Sometimes they try to fight by being really super sweet and very helpful and supportive. You never know. Remember who they were. And that's where when you journal, you can go back and say, oh, I remember how they were. I can get out of that fantasy world and reread when they called me a cunt or a bitch or they threw something at my head or they you know, put myself in safety or my children's safety um, you know, in harm's way. Remind yourself of those things, but make sure you have a really solid exit plan in place so that you are ready. Once you are out, it's like a fire. Once you're out, stay out. Anyone who's ever taken any of those fire safety plans, once you're out, stay out. Do not go back in for any objects because breaking that no contact, going back to them is gonna suck you right back in. And if you're like me, I went back many times. In fact, I had thrown him out and then kept letting him back in over and over again. It was a fire situation. That is life or death. You get the hell out of there and you do not go back for any of those things. You allow those things to burn in the fire. They are not important. If you're making excuses to go back there, you're making excuses to start the drama again. Because that's what it is. It's a drama. We're used to the drama. Well, when we break up, we always fight and then we get back together. And that's where the, the discomfort of the change happens. We have to stop the A plus B equals C. We have to stop saying when it hurts really bad, I'm gonna go back to them because that's the drama that we're used to. We've gotta feel the pain, act anyway, and keep pushing ourselves so that we don't go backwards and go back to that drama push through the drama, stay no contact so that you can get now to the next new thing instead of going back to what you knew. Uh, make sure you create a healthy support system. So that includes a therapist and a coach. That's where I can come in and help you out. Make sure you have positive people around you. You don't want people that are telling you that you, know, you should go back or that you don't really know what you're talking about because they're not living your life. They don't know what that person was like behind, behind closed doors. They don't know how you feel. And again, sometimes the person is not an abuser. Sometimes it just doesn't feel right. Sometimes it's just not the right person for you in a relationship. And that's okay too. No one can tell you how to live their life. Um, and yeah, once they show you who they are, believe them. You don't need to try to paint a different picture. You allow them to be who they are and you either accept that or don't accept that but you need to take care of you. Protecting yourself is your job. Your job is not to protect, uh, to protect anybody else. As a parent, maybe a little bit differently, obviously, but in a romantic relationship, your job is still to protect you and take care of yourself. Uh, make sure that you have constant support. Self-care is important, getting that exercise in. Um, you know, I recommend to all my clients to make sure they're getting exercise every single day, and they're, of course, they're green smoothies, meditation, yoga, things like that. Um, and you know, just really making sure that they are getting that support that they need from all around them. Talking about your feelings. 
There's no reason to stay in a victim mentality. Empower yourself, grow strong again, getting the right support, surrounding yourself with the right people. You will feel empowered. You will not go backwards, but you need to have the right team. Um, something that I want to make sure that people know is that there's that self blame that happens too. you know, Hey, I did things wrong. I was not perfect. You weren't, you're human. If you really go back and pull everything apart, I'm sure you made mistakes too. Congratulations. You're a human being. <clears throat> Don't make that an excuse to stay. We make mistakes. We react to things in unhealthy patterns in unhealthy patterns. Don't make that a reason to go backwards. If someone is bringing out the worst in you, remember that. <coughs> Sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. Um, remember that, <coughs> excuse me, re re hold on. Let me get myself a cough drop. Um, remember, you're going to be grieving this relationship. <coughs> you're grieving all the things you thought they were, was go they were going to be, who you thought they were. And, you know, all that stuff is normal. So be prepared for the discomfort of grieving the relationship. Um, decide who you want to be. Rediscover those passions. Figure out who you are. A lot of people don't know who they were before they even started the relationship. You know, I say all the time, two whole people come together, it's an amazing feat to see. It is beautiful. Two broken people come together, we've got problems. We've got unhealthy, it is not a healthy place if we are having two broken people. So two whole people, it's really beautiful. <clears throat> 